There are days when even the bravest among us feels small in the face of the storm. When the waves rise and the winds howl and fear and worry seem to rule the day. What do I do in the midst of this storm? What do I do with this uneasy feeling? This nagging worry, this creeping fear? Bring it to him. Lay it down at his feet. Cast your cares on the one who cares for you and rest in the ready arms of a well-able savior. He is the one who set the stars in the sky and scattered the sands on the shore. He is Alpha and Omega, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He is Creator and Savior. He is greater than your problem. He is bigger than your fear. He is closer than a heartbeat. He is the one who knows you best and loves you most. And he is with you always. When the storm comes, when the waters rise, Remember who you belong to and bring it to him. Welcome to worship with First Christian Stillwater. We are a welcoming place for all to connect to God's love. We are continuing online worship just a little bit longer than most. Our building remodel is still underway and yet 
very close to wrapping up. We have a plan to return to the sanctuary for worship on Sunday, July the 5th at 1030. We will be implementing lots of safety precautions, and you can read about those on our Facebook page, on our church website, or if we have your address, you should get a letter in the mail. You're welcome to call the church office and speak to any one of us about the details. We also realize that for many, online worship is still the best option, and we will be doing our best to continue providing that option. However, you worship with us, know that we are grateful and hopeful that through today's experience and our time with us, you encounter God. Let us pray. God, there are many who are running short on help and on hope, many that are struggling to face tomorrow, many surrounded by darkness, a void of all light, Others can sing with boldness, because you live, I can face tomorrow, because you live, all fear is gone. Help us, each and every one, to know who holds the future, to understand that life is truly worth living. Speak to our hearts today and help us to listen and learn. Thank you, God, for loving us for giving us your word, for sending us your son. Help us to love as we are loved. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. From Job chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. After this, Job opened his mouth and cursed the day of his birth. He said, May the day of my birth perish, and the night it was said, a baby is born. That day may it turn to darkness. May God above not care about it. May no light shine upon it. May darkness and deep shadow calm it once more, and a cloud settle over it. May blackness overwhelm its light. That night may thick darkness seize it, May it not be included among the days of the year, nor be it in any of the months. May that night be barren. May no shout of joy be heard in it. May those who curse days curse that day. Those who are ready to rose Leviathan. May its morning stars become dark. May it wait for daylight in vain and not see the first rays of dawn for it did not shut the doors of the room on me to hide troubles from my eyes. Job chapter 4 verses 1 through 9. Eliphaz speaks the innocent prosper. Then Eliphaz the Temanite answered and said, If one ventures a word with you, will you be impatient? Yet who can keep from speaking? Behold, you have instructed many, and you have strengthened the weak hands. Your words have upheld who was stumbling, and you have made firm the feeble knees. But now it has come to you, and you are impatient. It touches you, and you are dismayed. Is not your fear of God your confidence, and the integrity of your ways your hope? Remember, who that was innocent ever perished, or where were the upright cut off? As I have seen those who plow iniquity and sow trouble reap the same. By the breath of God they perish, and by the blast of his anger they are consumed. Job 7, verses 11-21 through 21. So I won't keep quiet when I'm suffering greatly. I'll speak out. When my spirit is bitter, I'll tell you how unhappy I am. Am I the ocean? Am I the sea monster? If I am not, why do you guard me so closely? Sometimes I think my bed will come for me. I think my couch will keep me from being unhappy. But even then you send me dreams that frighten me. You send me visions that terrify me. So I'd rather choke to death. That would be better than living in this body of mine. I hate my life. I don't want to live forever. Leave me alone. My days don't mean anything to me. 
What are human beings that you think so much of them? What are what are they that you pay so much attention to them? You check up on them every morning. You test ev- um, them every moment. Won't you ever look away from me? Won't you leave me alone for even one second? If I've really sinned, what, tell me what I've done to you. You see everything we do. Why do you shoot your arrows at me? Have I become a problem to you? Why don't you forgive the wrong things I've done? Why don't you forgive me for my sins? Soon I lie down in the dust of my grave. You'll search for me, but I'll be gone. Mother! Mother? Oh. Please get up. I'm not sure I can, Littlefoot. Yes, you can. Get up. Dear sweet little foot, do you remember the way to the Great Valley? I guess so. But why do I have to know you're going to be with me? I'll be with you. Even if you can't see me. What do you mean, if I can't see you? I can always see you. Littlefoot, let your heart guide you. It whispers, so listen closely. Mother? Mother? sad clip. We don't talk about sad things with kids in church, but we should. Sad things happen, and we shouldn't pretend that they don't or ignore that sometimes we hurt. Sometimes our friends hurt. We need to talk about it. We need to ask questions. We need to listen. We need to share. We want what's best for each other. We never want bad things to happen, but If they do, when they do, you are never alone and you are always loved. Your church family will always be here to help however we can. That's why God made the church to care for and to comfort those who are in need. And God will always love you. Someday, You might question if that's really true. It is. It always has been true. It always will be true. And nothing will ever change that. Nothing. Let's 
Let's pray. God, when hurt comes, when hearts break, we ask you to gently whisper in our ears, nothing, nothing can separate you from God's love. Nothing. May those words seek deep into our minds, our hearts, our souls, so deep that no accuser can ever take them away. So deep that no mean words can ever change our minds. So deep that they heal every broken heart. So deep that no matter what happens, we can say, it is well. It is well with my soul. Amen. Will you pray with me this morning? Dear God, as the light pierces the morning, may it likewise pierce our hearts with love. Love for the stranger, love for our neighbor, love for the wounded soul spewing hate. Love for the weary souls resisting the destructive forces let loose in the world. As the day unfolds, may our souls unfold with tenderness. Tenderness for those who grieve. Tenderness for the risk takers. Tenderness for the traumatized, the seekers, and the lonely. Tenderness for the heart of heart. May we practice tenderness with each other and practice gentleness with ourselves, forgiving each other and forgiving ourselves. Dear God, as the promise of new life calls us forth from our shadows, may we respond with joy, joy for the life that awaits, joy for the song that lifts our hearts, joy for the healing that transforms what is broken. Joy for the courage that steadies our steps and joy for the journey that connects us to one another. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray for the kingdom of justice and life, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Dear God, we pray all these things in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray for justice and life. Amen. This prayer is inspired by Reverend Ann Fraley of South Windsor, Connecticut, and Pastor Owen Caton of Ankeny, Iowa. Last week, we kicked off our summer series, Influencers. We got the idea from the social media trend based on likes and followers, but our theme is based on faith. You know, God influences us through the word, through prayer, through community, through the life of Jesus, through the Holy Spirit. But today, we're talking about the influence of pain and suffering based on scripture from the book of Job. Last week, we learned that Job was a righteous and godly man. He was a great father devoted to his family and devoted to God. And when he loses seemingly everything, his family, his servants, his possessions, he remains faithfully devoted to God. The story ended last week with these words, In all this, Job did not sin or charge God with wrongdoing. Have you ever heard the term, you have the patience of Job? 
Well, this week you'll learn that patience lasted for only two chapters. Maybe that will change your perspective the next time you hear the phrase. As most of us are aware, pain and suffering change things. Pain and suffering change people, changes our perspective, our opinion, our attitude, our life. We see that shift in the story of Job. Last week, it seemed Job had lost everything. He lost his possessions, most of his servants, his children. And while his loss was great, we see this week that he had not lost everything. This week, the accuser is allowed to attack Job's health. And that's where we pick up today. But before we do, let's pause for a word of prayer. God, as together we dig into this book of wisdom, we pray that you help us to gain wisdom and insight on dealing with life's challenges. We pray that through your word, you equip and enable us to face everything life brings our way, and not only us, but equip and enable us to bring care and comfort to those in need. It's in your name we pray these things. Amen. In his pain and suffering, Job curses the day that he was born. I want you to notice how Job tries to undo creation, turning day back into night, removing the light from the darkness, taking the stars from the sky, closing his mother's womb. Can you relate? both to times where you are so overwhelmed by darkness that you can't see the light and to times when you wish you could be God for just long enough to fix something for someone to take away their pain, their sorrow, and their suffering. I know you've heard this before, but I find it to be true so often when we're digging into a topic in scripture, we can expect to be confronted with that topic or that issue. For instance, when you are studying patience, be ready to have your patience challenged. Monday morning, I was approached with one person after another dealing with incredible pain and suffering. The just suffer, just like the unjust suffer. Bad things happen to really good people. Most of us have experience that is evidence of that truth. We all experience pain and suffering, maybe different levels, but at some time, we all hurt. And we are all, why people? Why me? Why this? Why her? Why now? We think that knowing why will make it better when in reality it won't. God doesn't answer the why question in Job, even though Job asks. Ashley pointed out when we were discussing scripture this week that Job never knows about the conversations between God and the accuser. He's not aware of the events in the heavenly throne room like we are. Job has no idea of what's going on or why. And yet, even knowing what we know, we still ask, why, God? But if we get stuck on the why, we miss the answers that the book of Job does offer. How do we deal with our pain and suffering? And how do we comfort others who deal with pain and suffering? We miss the part in our scripture reading today of Job's friends starting out right, how they come and sit by Job for seven days without saying anything. They just sit by his side. What we see today is where they begin to offer their advice, where they claim that the innocent don't die and are convinced that Job's suffering is a result of some sin that he must have done something terribly wrong. Notice how Job's friends talk endlessly about God and yet never really speak to God on behalf of their friend Job. There's a lesson for us in that. There are three friends, 
Eliphaz, who speaks from his experience. Job, I know your problem. I have experience with this. Let me tell you how to fix it. Bildad, who speaks from his tradition. This is how it's done. This is how it's always been done. This is how it should be done. Zophar, who speaks from his intuition and instinct. He lets his feelings guide the way. And none of the three are helpful or bring any kind of comfort or relief. When someone is hurting, they may seek answers, but they don't usually need your experience or your answers. And that's true for individuals and also groups who suffer in justice. Your experience is not theirs. Don't tell them what what why they should what they should think, how they should act or feel based on your experience. It isn't their experience. Your tradition, how you do things or expect things to be done, isn't helpful for someone else or other groups of people. We need to seek to be guided by the Spirit, not our own intuition or instinct when we seek to bring comfort. We tend to mess things up every single time. When you're seeking to comfort someone, be there. Be present. Empathize. Try to understand how they feel and what they're going through. Ask questions if they feel like talking and listen. Really listen. Understand when someone hurts, they may say or do things that are offensive. Job's friends didn't even recognize him when they first saw him. He looked so terrible. Job was covered from head to toe with sores. Can you imagine? You know, Marla always tells us in the infirmary that what the, res what the residents need most is touch. Some of our men's favorite activity is love and rub, not. Rubbing lotion on those dirty, mangled feet is not the vision of seaside mission work that many of you have in your mind, but that's what participants do. They touch sores. They hug necks of people with dried food stuck to their face and body odor beyond description. Why? Because touching is healing hard to see suffering and not want to do something about it. And I can't tell you the number of times that I've seen someone take a deep breath, open up their arms, and welcome and embrace. And in doing so, healing takes place in both individuals, for both parties. It's not really what you have to say. So many people worry about the right words. Were you paying attention to Eliphaz's first words? If one ventures a word with you, will you be offended? If your true goal is to bring comfort, that's probably a question you shouldn't have to ask. If you're worried that what you're going to say to somebody, especially someone who is in pain or is suffering, may bring more pain or suffering or may be offensive, don't ask. And certainly don't say it. Eliphaz's speech goes from bad to worse. Remember, he's the voice of wisdom and experience and his wisdom and experience lead him to the conclusion, it's Job's fault. According to, suf according to scripture, suffering does have a purpose. God prepares us through suffering. God equips us with strength, endurance, patience, and compassion and understanding through suffering. God is glorified in suffering, as odd as that may sound. Think about times of great suffering and sorrow where good always rises to the surface. You know, at the beginning 
of the co coronavirus. The news stories revolved around facts and fear and statistics, but not long into that, you saw a shift and a change, and there started to be stories about how the ways that people were good, how they provided help and hope, sacrifice and love. My point is suffering has different purposes and God has different plans for different people. Don't claim to understand the purpose or the plan. Just point a finger to the one who truly knows, who truly does. In chapter 7, Job defends himself. He starts speaking about God, but notice that he moves more and more to speaking to God. He asks God really hard questions. You can do that too. God has really big shoulders. That's something that I know through my experience. And God wants us, God expects us to be honest. We can bring our deepest hurts, our greatest fear, and our biggest anger to God and know that God hears, God understands. We can also count it as a rare and extreme privilege to be so trusted by another, to be the one that they share their pain and sorrow and suffering with. Trust me, I know it's hard, but you can do hard things. You were created to do hard things. I spoke with someone this week who was really dreading having a difficult conversation with someone who was suffering did it anyway. He listened and he shared candy bars and in doing so he relieved some pain and he eased some sorrow. Now we are called not only to share joys but also to comfort in times of sorrow. May God equip and enable us to bring comfort not only to our friends in need but to a world in need. May Job's life teach us to live our lives openly and honestly before God, knowing that he is our only hope in time of sorrow. To turn our back on God is to reject all joy and peace and hope and love that he offers. Free gifts offered and available to us at all times, gifts that not only we receive, but we share with others. When we come face to face with the influence of pain and suffering, may we remember Job and his steadfast faithfulness and also his honest prayer and unloading to God. May we also remember our call to influence others in times of grief and sorrow by bringing effective comfort and true friendship. I'm going to close with a story that's intended for nothing more than to inspire thought. There's a man who went to a barber shop to have his hair cut and his beard trimmed and the barber began to work and as he did they started up conversation, good conversation. They talked about many things and various subjects. They touched on sports and politics and current events. And eventually the conversation touched on the subject of God. And the barber said, I don't believe God exists. Well, why do you say that? Asked the customer. Well, you just have to go out to the street to realize that God doesn't exist. Tell me if God exists, would there be so many sick people? Would there be abandoned children? If God exists, would there be, if God exists, there would be neither suffering or pain. I just can't imagine a loving God who would allow those things. And the customer thought for a moment, but he didn't respond because he didn't want to start an argument. 
The barber finished his job and the customer left the shop and just after he left the barber shop, he saw a man in the street with long stringy hair and an untrimmed beard, he looked dirty and unkempt. And the customer turned back and went back into the barber shop and faced the barber and said, you know what? Barbers don't exist. The barber looked at him surprised and said, how can you say that? I'm right here and I am a barber and I just worked on you. No, the customer exclaimed, barbers don't exist because if they did, there would no, be no people with long, dirty hair or untrimmed beards, just like that man standing outside. Oh, but barbers do exist. That's just what happens when people don't come to me. Exactly, exactly, affirmed the customer. That's the point. God, too, does exist. And his door is open. And he's ready for you to walk in so that he can provide care and comfort when you suffer and are in pain. Amen.
As we drove New Mexico Highway 38 through the mountains of the Carson National Forest, the road was going up and up, switchback after switchback, until we finally reached Bobcat Pass at 9,820 feet. Along the way, there were numerous road signs, watch for falling rock, and there were concrete Jersey barriers set as an afterthought to keep the rocks off the highway. And at one point, the wall of rock is no gentle incline, just a sheer wall of rock. And there I spot a tree growing. No soil, no other vegetation, one pine tree. Not only taking root there, but seeming to flourish, glossy green needles, straight trunk growing towards the sun. That tree all alone, struggling through drought, through wind and wildfire, just as we struggle through the storms of life, through the pain of grief, through fear of the unknown, through coronavirus and isolation, through despair, when witnessing the lack of respect for the value of one human life. Through hopelessness, watching protest and civil unrest, struggling through the suffering we witness in others and experience ourselves. The purpose, the motivation to live, the purpose to grow and to flourish every day, even under the harshest conditions, the image of that one tree right at home, alone and under harsh situations, growing taller, growing straight, and maybe even flourishing. So this morning, dig in, dig deep, and find the courage to live and to flourish as God has intended for us. Find the strength to flourish under these tough circumstances, God calls us to life. God calls us to flourish. This is God's table, and everyone is welcome. And on that night, Jesus gathered his disciples around the table. He took the bread, and he blessed it, and he broke it. He said, this is my body broken for you. And likewise, he took the cup and he blessed it. He said, this is the cup of hope. This is the cup of salvation. As often as you drink it, remember how much I love you. Remember what I have done for you. Let us pray. Dear God, we gather at your table ready to be fed with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. As we partake, Fill us with courage to live and to flourish just as you intended. Amen. Please share communion with each other. Share courage and share encouragement as we work through these difficult times. Amen.
Each week, we offer a call to discipleship. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we invite you to do so. God's door is always open and you are always welcome. God is waiting with open arms. If what you're looking for is family, we would welcome you into ours. We are not perfect, but we are a place where imperfect people can be changed by the love of God. And now the hard part, if you're in pain or suffering, you are not alone. Reach out and allow someone to bring you care and comfort in time of need. Each and every one of us are challenged to go into this week with open eyes to those in need of care and comfort and be willing to sit by their side, go and loved as you are loved with confidence that you have been equipped and enabled to every purpose for which you are called. Amen.